Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloryTutors.com and in this video we're going to be looking at S-block compound stability. So we're going to be looking at S-block elements which are group 1 and group 2 elements and we're basically going to look at the compounds of nitrates and carbonates. Uh, we're going to look at the stability of these and we're going to uh, come up with an exp explanation as to why some are more stable than others and we're also going to look at some thermal decomposition reactions of group 1 and 2 nitrates and carbonates. So we're going to start by looking at the key points and these are going to be the points that are going to underlie everything that we're going to do in this video. And they're on the right over there. So you can see that nitrate and carbonate group 1 and 2 compounds become more stable as we go down the group. So that's the first point. And the second point is that group 1 nitrates, nitrates and carbonates are more stable than group 2 ones. And so we're going to go through the explanation here and find out why. But just before we do that, we need to know what a carbonate and nitrate is, just as a reminder. So carbonates are CO3 2 minus, and nitrates are NO3 minus, as you can see on the bottom right. Okay, so we're going to find a, a reason why, and we're going to start with this point here. So group 1 nitrates and carbonates are more stable than group 2. So I've got them over here. I've got a group 2 uh, element, which is calcium, and I've got it bonded with a carbonate. And I've got a group 1 element and, again, bonded with a carbonate. The, the principle is the same for nitrates as well, but I've just picked these two as an example. So, effectively, what it's got to do with is the charge of the cation, and this is the positive charge here. The bigger the, ca the, bigger the charge or, uh, on the cation, then the more um, distorted the electrons are going to be in the molecule. So, we can see here we've got calcium, which is a 2 plus, and carbonate, which is a 2 minus. This has got a bigger charge than the Na+, so that means this one is going to be distorted more than this one. And the more distortion you've got in the, uh, in the molecule we've got here, then the more um, unstable your molecule is. So, for example, calcium carbonate would be more unstable because of the greater distortion than sodium carbonate. So it's all to do with the distortion of electrons and the charge on the positive ion. Okay, so if we look at the next key point, which is nitrate and carbonate group 1 and 2 compounds become more stable as we go down the group. This one's a little bit more complex. So if we look here, we've got two ions, and these are both group 2, uh, group two elements. We've got beryllium and we've got magnesium. And just to make it a little bit more visual, I've drawn magnesium ion bigger than the beryllium ion because that's the, in terms of the ionic radius, it is bigger than beryllium. Now, if we look here, remember we're looking at about the, the charge, the size of the charge. In this case, they've both got a 2 plus charge. So the next thing we've got to look at is the density, the charge density. And you can see here that this is a smaller ion. They both have the same charge, but this is smaller. That gives it a bigger charge density. Um, and effectively, the um, ability or this atom will distort the electrons more. This ion, sorry, will distort the electrons more. So the electrons will move more towards this side, create a bigger distortion. Therefore, this will be more unstable as a carbonate. Whereas this one has got the same charge, but it's spread over a larger ion. Uh, and so effectively, the carbonate ion, um, the electrons, sorry, are not distorted as much towards the magnesium, and this is to do with shielding. Remember we've got a nucleus in the middle of both of these atoms, and this is the reason why electrons are pulled over to the cation in the first place, is because of the nuclear charge. Now, this, atom is, this ion is bigger, this magnesium one, it has more shielding, therefore the effects of the nuclear charge are reduced, so therefore the distortion won't be as great. So if we come back to this, you can see nitrate and carbonates um, in group 1 and 2 compounds become more stable as we go down the group. That's the reason why. Okay, so just looking at a few examples, when we're talking about stability, we're talking about thermally decomposing these. So how stable are they in terms of therm thermal decomposition? So this just means heating them up. That's all we're doing. So if we look at carbonates first, group 1 um, are generally stable. So if you take them, take a Bunsen burner and try to heat these group 1 solids they won't break down. They're really, really stable. Um, and this is because of the lack of distortion. There is an exception, though, and this is lithium. And lithium has got a really small ion in group one. It has this ability to move the electrons towards itself, towards the cation, and therefore it weakens or makes the uh, carbonates 
less stable. And effectively, when we heat up the lithium carbonate, which is this here, Li2CO3, remember the carbonate is two minus, and lithium is plus one as an ion, so you need two of them for every carbonate. We effectively form lithium oxide, which is Li2O, plus carbon dioxide. Okay, so if we look at group twos, the group twos are less stable than group ones um, for the reasons that we explained over here. And you can see if we take magnesium carbonate and we react it, uh, so we heat it up, so we thermally decompose it, we always form an oxide and carbon dioxide. So as a general rule, when we heat up carbonates, you always form an oxide and carbon dioxide. Okay, so just coming on to the nitrates. Nitrates are a little bit more tricky. Uh, group one, they form a nitrite and an oxygen. So when we thermally decompose a group one nitrate, these are the two products that we form. Now a nitrite is NO2 minus, and I'm gonna highlight it. You see I've highlighted that in red. I've got an example here. So this is sodium nitrate with NO3 on the end, and this is two lots of sodium nitrate. Heat that up, it will decompose to form sodium nitrite, which is this one in red. So I'm gonna underline that in red. That's for the nitrite. Uh, and we also form oxygen, which I'm gonna underline in green. So I'll put on there. Okay, um, there is an exception. Again, this, is, this exception is lithium. And when you heat lithium nitrates, effectively what you get, because lithium is very, very, um, it can distort the electrons more than any other group one element, it behaves as if it was a group two element and you actually form oxides, nitrates, and oxygen. So when we do the lithium one, you've got to make sure actually the products of lithium oxide are the same as products for group two oxides, which I'm going to go through now. Okay, so group two, oxide, uh, group two nitrates will decompose and they will form oxygen, nitrogen dioxide, uh, and uh, an oxide as well. So I've got an example here. This is magnesium nitrate. So again, if we look here, magnesium is a plus two charge um, because it's in group two. The nitrate is NO3 minus. We need two NO3 minuses to balance out the magnesium two plus charge. So that's why we've got a two there. So that's really important that you make sure you get that one right. Um, and we form a oxide. And again, we've got an oxide in red. So there's our oxide. And this could be applied to any other uh, group two metal as well. Uh, the nitrogen dioxide, which we'll highlight in green. So you can see there's our nitrogen dioxide there. So do that in green. And then we also have oxygen as well. And our oxygen is obviously over there. Uh, you've got to make sure that these balance as well. That's really important because if they don't balance, you lose a mark in the exam. Okay, so just a final point is about how do you know uh, how stable these things are. It's really simple. Basically, you time how long for carbonates, you time how long it takes for the carbonate to produce carbon dioxide. And you can test for carbon dioxide by bubbling it through, by bubbling the gas of carbon dioxide through the lime water, and that will make it turn cloudy. Uh, and you can test to see how uh, stable uh, nitrates are by seeing how long it will take to either form oxygen, and oxygen will relight the glowing spins, NO2, which is a brown brown gas that you'll see, um, or the formation of your solid oxide as well. And basically, the more stable your carbonate or nitrate is, uh, the longer it's going to take to form these products that were mentioned over there. But that's it. I hope that helps. Bye.